Hi everyone, this is Snooks. Do you know what's stopping most couples from having a great or phenomenal marriage? It's settling for one that's good or just okay. That's why we're inviting you to go to MarriedIntoCrazy.com to watch our free webinar and then register for our marriage communication workshop at the end of the month. It's a free workshop that'll give you valuable tools to understand and communicate on a whole other level with your spouse or loved one. So register today and let us be an ally for your marriage. The link will be in the show notes. Now let's get ready for the podcast. You know, it's like it's a, it's a sex fest and then the kids come along and then life and then you remember, oh, you're laughing because a you remember sex when we, fest. That's what I'm laughing. At. I'm like, what? Do you remember when we pulled the mattress in the living room? <laughs> yeah. You gonna tell all our business? I'm gonna tell, wow. all, I'm gonna tell it all. That's so funny. We yeah. married. Five. Whether you've been married one or 20 plus years, at some point, you realize you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. Welcome to episode 119 of the Married Into Crazy podcast with Snooks and Lovey. and Lovey? I'm Lovey. <laughs> I'm Lovey. Will the real Lovey please stand up? And I'm Snooks. She's always looking no, for a I'm way not. to mess me up. No, I'm not. So I want to thank you. She's feeling a little spicy this evening, so we want to thank everybody here. So this should be a good show. So as we said, this is episode 119. You could be in so many different places, but we're thankful that you've chosen to you know, get your ear hustle on with us. Of course, we're a couple that's been married close to 24 years. Yep, We are what, two weeks out? Two weeks out from our 24 year anniversary. We met on a, what I call a blind date, but she says we were bamboozled. We were tricked into meeting each other. And then uh, she proceeded to tell everybody that I was a nerd and not her type and can't figure out why people thought we should meet. And we were engaged four months later. Yeah. But I didn't proceed to tell everyone that. Tell everybody. He loves to say she that. Told everybody. Um, our meet anniversary is what? Isn't it tomorrow? I mean, December 16th. Yeah. So the day the podcast comes out. Right. So when you're hearing this, if you listen to this on Wednesday, December 16th, it is our 26 year, 25 year. 25. 25 year anniversary from the day that we met. Wow. On December 16th. So uh welcome. <laughs> No, so it's all about, you know, and the things that we've gone through, the trials and tribulations, you know, go back and listen to the archive, you listen to our very first several podcasts, you hear about how I was stabbed by her ex-boyfriend and two open heart surgeries and nearly died and I had to walk through snow, 15 miles, all of that. So you'll hear all that. But in the meantime, we're going to catch you up to what we've been doing recently. And this weekend, we had a date night. Oh, man, we had a date night on Saturday. So, you know, it's holiday season. And once a year for the last few years, um, Lovey would take me to see some type of holiday play or whatever. I love the Nutcracker. So we would go and we he, we go out on a date with COVID. Obviously, you can't do that. But we were able to get, um, do a concert at home, Dave Cause and Friends, Dave Cause Holiday Concert and Friends, uh, Jonathan Butler, Peter White. I don't remember uh, the other people's names. Kenny Lattimore was Kenny there, Lattimore. Michael Lighting, and Rebecca Jade. Oh, good job. Yeah. Can't remember what's the pianist's name. Oh, oh, Simon. Brian Simon? Brian Simmons? I don't remember either. I see it's crazy because Dave Cause had a, a, a completely different lineup originally scheduled. Well, he had, there's a couple that he added in be, because um, uh, David Benoit was supposed to be there. Richard Elliott was also supposed to be there Rick along Braun. with Rick Braun, but all three of them had COVID. Right. So they were not able to come. So he was able to call on some friends, some diff- additional friends, I should say. And they proceeded to do, the, to do the concert and it was streamed on TV and Lovey and I had dinner and dessert and our house is totally decorated because Christmas is my absolute favorite holiday. And we danced around with our Christmas lights and everything, the fireplace. 
We had a ball. It was so we great. We acted a fool. We sat there, got lovey dovey. She did because then did there was not. the pianist. So Dave Cos, they did this uh, music of Charlie oh. Brown. <laughs> and so when the music of Charlie Brown came on, we just watched Charlie we Brown last just week. Just watched Charlie Brown. Mm -hmm. And so, so just so you know, if you don't know this, we do 25 days of Christmas every single year. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are corny as all get up. Well, it's not corny. But it makes it makes our lives fun. Yeah, and the and our our daughters are still into it too because they're like, what what movie are we watching tonight? So we're gonna watch a movie tonight. So twenty five yeah. days leading up to Christmas, we watch, watch something some type of Christmas. It could be a something. thirty minute cartoon to a you know hour and a half, half movie or whatever. But all twenty five days Christmas theme. But go ahead, sorry. No, I was gonna say. So we acted a little corny. So we were like, hey, do the do the Charlie Brown dance. <laughs> so we jumped up, and it was just us because the kids were gone, and. We started dancing like the characters you see on Peanuts mm -hmm. on the Charlie Brown Christmas. And it was, we had a good time. When it was Schroeder's fun. playing the piano there on the stage and they're dancing. And yeah, so, that yeah. one guy that's doing all that. It, it was hilarious. It was fun. We had a good time. It was so nice. Yeah. Don't take yourself so seriously that you can't just have moments like that where you're just having fun. It's just the two of you mm -hmm. letting your hair down, being very vulnerable and just having fun. <laughs> so that's getting you up to snuff on where we're at, what we've done recently. But we recognize what time of year this is. Like she said, this is Christmas, which means that New Year's coming right around the corner. And typically, um, sorry, I'm just all taking over. Go ahead. And typically New Year's means, you know, a lot of people, they want to set new goals and they have the resolution. So I'm going into 2021 and we're just going to take off running and they do all that kind of stuff. Right. So we make plans, right? Everyone's ready to especially this year, turn the corner on 2020 yeah. and, and try and do something new and different and, and really set 2021 apart from this crazy year that we've had with COVID and elections and just so many, so much craziness. There's been a lot of loss, uh, but there've been some pretty amazing uh, things that have taken place as well. There's, whenever there's adversity, there's always going to be some form of um, solution that goes along with that. And there've been some amazing solutions like Dave Cause. There are more streaming events now than mm -hmm. ever before. And people are finding that there is a, a variety of different ways to, to create revenue. Um, we're coaching. We have clients all over the world. I've got clients that uh, I speak to over in France um, and across the United States. And so that didn't happen prior to 2020. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. It, it's like we're so separated as far as physically, the physical touch. We, we are, we don't have the ability to do that, but we do have the ability to see our family. I think more older, you know how like the kids would tease me and I would tease my mom about technology. So we have more older people learning about technology and really getting into it now that with the Zoom and all the things that they're doing online, you know. So even for ourselves, typically on some Sundays after church, we would have a church dinner fellowship and stuff. And because of our, we had a, our, our, what is that dinner on Blanc? It was a couple months ago. All right. Date night. Date night. Yeah. So I kind of introduced that to our church. I'm like, Hey, cause we do church on zoom. I'm like, we should do something like that with the church. And they love the idea. And so this Sunday after we had service, we did our church dinner fellowship on zoom and we got to see a lot of people, you know, just really sit and chit chat and just have fun. And so we, our pastor, he was like, okay, we're going to play some games. And of course we did a lot of Bible trivia and they were like, girl, you know, a lot of stuff. I was like, yeah, I do. I have my Google ready. <laughs> <laughs> Cheating. They, they didn't see that, but you know, but um, it was, it was a lot of fun. So you, we found new and inventive ways to be able to stay connected with other people, even though we cannot, physically touch them you know um I'm, I'm ready for COVID to be over because I miss my mom um I you know I don't get to go see her as much as I want to I'm a, I'm a mama's girl at heart through and through through and through and the last time I saw her I almost cried because I I got a hugger you know um but trying to protect our parents and stay and keep them safe I I typically stay away more just because of the environment where I work I'm more exposed than Lovey is. And I work in a prison and right now where it's like our, where we're at, we're starting to have a, um, an influx of cases are rising. It's like um, now it's hitting us. And so I'm like, I have to stay extra careful. You know, we're 
testing all the time and everything. So I don't get to, I, I try to keep, stay home more. You know, and it's important that you recognize that even though we're talking about the things that we've done recently, we're trying to provide nuggets as we go in story form, you know, almost like a parable type thing. But it, it relates to our relationships and that we should be willing to try new and different things. Just because something has been done a certain way for X amount of time doesn't mean it has to be done that way all the time. Mm -hmm. And so be careful out there. I mean, this, I know there's a lot of people out there that think, oh, COVID, it's not that big a deal. It's just like the flu. Um, I didn't get a chance to tell you this, but I got a phone call today. Um, one of my old uh, doctors that I used to call on um, in, a, in, a, in a city, um, really good family. Um, I've known him, his wife for umpteen years. Um, I got a phone call today that um, this doctor, Blesingame, um, actually passed away as a result of uh, complications due to COVID. Wow. I don't know how he contracted it. I don't know if it was because he was exposed by a patient um, or if it was, you know, something else. But I do know that um, he had passed away, as a matter of fact, on our son's birthday, December 3rd. Wow. So I got that phone call today. And this is a gentleman, first, you know, first line responder that whose entire life has been dedicated to serving his community. And he passed away as a result of COVID. So it's real, folks. Don't just because you may not have been exposed directly or you don't know anybody personally, um, don't take it lightly mm -hmm. because that thing will show up on your doorstep and, and change the trajectory of your entire life. So do take it serious. Yeah. Um, but with us only having two weeks left in the year, everyone's making plans for 2021. Mm -hmm. And so as you're making these plans and you're building out your vision boards and creating new mantras, cause I'm in the process of doing that as well. I'm, I'm writing down my values and, trying to figure out, okay, well, what's, what's aligned with my values moving forward in 2021. So that way the things that I do, the priorities always align to your values. What you value most will dictate what you do on a daily basis. You can talk about how, you know, oh, I want to be fit. Well, if it's not, if, have, if living a, a fit lifestyle isn't truly part of your value system, you can talk about being fit as you're sitting on the couch, eating a tub of ice cream and mm -hmm. not working out. And, and when I say working out, it doesn't mean it has to be something crazy. It could be something that you love. I want to get back out on the court and play some more pickleball. I just, I drove by the court today and I was telling Kiki, I was like, man, we haven't been out there in so long, but it's so cold. You it's know? cold, but we can get out there and still get it done before it's it starts cold. really raining. Did you? It's cold. <laughs> But it, it could just be Why something that fun, even understand? you know, but I, I mean, I'm not going to go down that path uh, of just talking about fitness, but is it really truly part of your value system? So as you're developing your values and you're writing down what you want to accomplish and make sure they're aligned with your values, so you can truly stick with them. There's things that we recommend that you might want to consider as you're planning out for 2021. One of which, when it comes to relationships is first and foremost, to really ask yourself, how crazy is my relationship? Mm -hmm. And crazy, of course, it's an acronym. When we say married into crazy, crazy stands for something. Compassion, real, accountable, zealous, and yielding. And each one of those, we have a checklist that we've created that's available free as a resource on our website, which is marriedintocrazy.com. Go to our first page. You can see a little orange button there that says um, you deserve a five-star rated marriage. Click that button, and there's a very short webinar that we do talking about you know, the, the workshop that we do, the free workshop that we offer every single month. This month, it's going to be the day after Christmas. So again, it's a Christmas gift from us that's absolutely free. But when you go and watch that webinar, and you'll see there, it's a click here for a free tool. I think it's called the free audit tool. But when you click on that, you're automatically going to get an email with this free tool that we're talking about. And this audit tool is going to give you a ranking or a checklist, if you will, for each one of those components, compassionate, real, accountable, zealous, and yielding. Mm -hmm. It'll go from needs improvement all the way up to phenomenal and really do an audit for yourself. Don't sit there and rate your spouse or your loved one, rate yourself. It'd be nice if both of you download it, rate yourself. Okay. Compassionate. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm good. Your, your spouse might say, oh, I'm, I'm phenomenal at this. But then you might think that, oh, okay, well, we're keeping it real. Okay, well, I need improvement. Do that little checklist to get to kind of take, do an audit, if you will, on where you're at and being crazy. And so when you're doing that, that's going to give you a baseline to know what you might want to work on to make 2021 the craziest year ever when it comes to your relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. And so think about your goals. And when you're developing your, your, uh, the board, the vision board, 
add some values to that vision board. It's nice to, to put pictures on there that say, you know, that have like, you know, the, the big house, the ring, the car, the vacations, all these things that you really want to accomplish and do, you know, the business, but also attach some values. You know, the word fitness, if that's one of your values, the word um, fiscally responsible. So, you know, whatever those values are, when you sit down and figure out what's most important to you to prioritize, it's nice to have those words on there as well, because then it's those values that ultimately will, if they're aligned well with the things you want, as long as you stick to your values, it'll make it that much easier or less difficult to acquire those things that you're putting on your vision board. So as you're writing that all out, we want you to think about this other thing. You may or may not have heard of a SWOT analysis. Mm -hmm. So I never heard of a SWOT analysis. And it's just funny that like Lovey and I were more on the same page regarding what we wanted to talk about. Um, I was like, oh, you know, we it's New Year's coming up. Let's talk about some goals and and where we want to be and how we want to move and, and and just try to be encouraging and use the audit tool because rate ourselves on how crazy we are and take that into the new year in 2021. And he was like, hey, so let's do a SWOT over, uh, analysis. And I was like, SWOT? And I'm like, you want to SWAT me? You know? I do. <laughs> on the bottom, girl. Whatever. <laughs> So SWOT is actually an acronym. I had to look it up and it's uh, an acronym for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And so how would that play out when we're looking at SWOT? Let's go one by one, each of these. And as you're laying out your vision board and creating these goals for next year, how would we use the SWOT analysis as an overlay? Well, okay, so... Let's focus on S. Oh, okay. So SWAT is um, SWAT. S is your strengths. So what are you, what are you in, in, in regards to talk? Look, we'll deal with marriage, right? Right. Okay. So what are your strengths in marriage? I think that that's something that we talk, we should probably talk about together. Not, I mean, you could do it on your own, but I feel like it would be better if the two of you sat down and okay, what are our, what are our strengths in marriage? Um, well, maybe we're great at communicating, you know, um, maybe our strength is that I won't say maybe for us, I want to say, I think our, our main strength is our faith. You know, we put, we put the Lord first before everything, um, in the mornings when we get up one before I eat, either one of us leaves the house, we pray together. If you're asleep, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm out. I wake you or you're laying there, you'll wake me. And so that was, that's one of our major strengths. We, we pray together. I think that another strength is that we have fun together. That's so important. I think that's key. Lovey kind of said it earlier a little, don't take yourself so seriously that you can't have fun and you can't make fun of yourselves. You can't joke around or, you know, I don't want to be in a relationship where we're just so stiff neck and rigid with everything. I'm gonna be honest with you. Lovey was kind of, uh, he, he had to learn how to loosen up a little bit when we, we first got together. I was like, not that he didn't laugh or whatever, but I, I don't know if it was the military or whatever, but I said, whatever a lot. Sorry. He would, he never slouches. He doesn't like look relaxed. He always looks like he's just prim and proper and his back is straight and he stands up at attention. And I'm like, can you relax a little bit? You know, relax your stance. Don't just wiggle your arms, loosen up some, but that's just how he is. And he's, he, he does now he slouches a little bit more, but <laughs> that's due to age, <laughs> but anyway, I, I, that's one of our, I think our strength, we have, um, we have a great time together. We're like, like we said, we're best friends and we just enjoy each other's company. Not all the time though, because I'm going to tell you as much as I enjoy his company, there are times I'm like, if he don't leave me alone. And I know he feels the same way because when I want to come in and I want to sit on his lap and mess around or whatever. And he's like, babe, I got stuff to do. <laughs> it's true. But I agree with you in the respect that it should be done together. This is something that if you're, if you're doing like a, your vision boards, all that stuff, Individually, that's fine. But when it comes to the SWOT analysis for your relationship, it really should be done together because like Snook said, talk about your SWOT as a couple. So when we move on to weaknesses, then you start to actually be very, very 
transparent and real, right? That second letter in crazy, real about, and be honest, not brutally honest, but honest about where are our weaknesses? What are the things? I can tell you right now, being completely transparent, we have good sex, but we don't have it as often as I would like because we're tired all the time. It's just good. It's not. It's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. Like, okay. <laughs> no, but it's one of those things where I think that's a weakness or potentially an area of opportunity. And sometimes your weakness can be an area of opportunity that we're going to get into next. But the weakness is that something that, that, you know, when you first get married, it's like, oh, all the time, three, four, five, six, seven times a week. Then it's like, oh, okay. Every now and then on the weekend, it's like, it's a, it's a sex fest. And then the kids come along and then life. And then you remember, oh, you're laughing because you remember when we put, fest. that's what I'm laughing. At. I'm like, what? Do you remember when we pulled the mattress into the living room? Yeah. You're going to tell all our business. I'm going wow. to tell it all. That's so funny. We yeah. married, we married, it was sanctified, <laughs> but it's one of those things where, um, but a, you know, a, a weakness might be that, or it might be that, you know, that somebody's too serious all the time. Oh, in, in, you know, in the evaluating our, my own individual weakness, like how it affects, I think it affects our marriage is a lot of times when I come home, I'm a hermit. I just want to just sit up in my room and not that I don't want to interact with my family. I don't want to take it like that. But once I'm home, I'm home. And I just want to, and lovey knows, mm -hmm. I, I'm almost done. I'm like, oh, let me cook. Let me do all the stuff I need to do. Please don't ask me to do anything else because I, I almost don't have nothing for you. And that presents a problem when there are things that we need to do as a couple. I sometimes begrudgingly do it. And Lovey has to almost just like drag me along at times. And there are times when I'm I'm like, I'm tired. I don't want to do that. And it can cause a... Wait, are we still talking about sex? Really? <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. There are times though that, you know, that can cause an, an argument when there are things that need to be done. And I'm just like, I just... I just can't, not that I can't, I just don't want to, because I, I, I tend to, like I said, be a hermit and I just want to change my clothes, do all the stuff I need to do real, real quick. And I need the rest of the evening to myself so I can read. I swear we're still talking about sex, but okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. So then moving on. So silly. The next one so is. So you don't have none? What? No weaknesses. I got no weaknesses, girl. Wow. I got none. Then there you have it, folks. That's his weakness. He doesn't know how to tell the truth. My no. arrogance. <laughs> no. No, you know, but no, I mean, we do. I, I mean, my weakness is that I, I don't listen. I, I'm so action I mean, as oriented. As far as that could reflect oh, absolutely. the relationship. Absolutely. It's because I, I want things done my way. Yes. I like things done a certain way. He's a big baby. In my way. And I will throw a tantrum in a heartbeat. And, but it's one of those, it's a weakness and it's something that, I, but it is also an area of opportunity, but it's that thing that, mm -hmm. and it's not just that when it comes to our relationship, it, it's time management. It's having enough compassion. I know that compassion is an area that I need to work on to where my weakness is that I don't always see things from the other person's point of view. And that's that empathy piece. It's something that I'm consistently been working on for 25 years now, and I'm still working on it. So look, hey, if y'all have been working on something for 25 years, it's not too late. No, keep working. Keep working. <laughs> Get this checklist. I I'm running through it's it as well. Funny. And then you have opportunities, right? So SWAT, S-W-O-T, O is for opportunities. So you want to jump into that? No, you go first this time. Okay, so opportunities is just like, so when you take a look at your relationship, where are your opportunities for growth. If you both recognize that, you know, I think it could be travel. I think we should go more places, do more things, you know, together um, as a couple, or it might be like, you know, there's an opportunity to where I want to learn more about, I want to get more invested in my job. Or and if somebody says that, or I want to go for another promotion. Is there an opportunity for you to support your spouse mm -hmm. that much more so they can do that? Like a perfect example is like Snooks is uh, this upcoming year, 2021. The goal is for her to achieve her master or start her master's program. And so we want to do is that requires me to pick up some slack. What? Not quit my job. <laughs> yeah. I for, thought that was an opportunity. What's up? <laughs> yeah. You got an opportunity for jokes. <laughs> um, so, but, but it's one of those things where, so I have to find ways, opportunities to really support her and make sure that she has no other worries outside of you know, either the job or pursuing her master's degree. And when she does that, when she, she wants to become a full fledged, um, Marriage and life, uh, was it marriage and family, 
therapist. And in doing it, there's going to be some clinical rotations, clinical work that she's going to have to do to where she won't be able to work. And so I have to make sure that, you know, we really grind to the point where we get things done. So there's an opportunity for me knowing what, what's in front of us, the opportunity is to start building that foundation, that nest egg or what have you to support her. I was going to say, and that's the opportunity. And that's a part of my opportunity also, because knowing that I'm going to go back to school and there I may decide, well, I don't want to go to work and go to school at the same time. There are things that we have to put in place in order for that to happen. Um, we had that opportunity when I first went to school. I didn't work. I, I was off of work for almost seven years. Mm -hmm. And so went back to work. So now I don't want to put undue stress on Levy. So the opportunity is, okay, now we're going to sit down together and we're going to really tackle every single thing as far as financials look at every list okay we're just going to get rid of that okay well we're safe for that or whatever it is we'll sit and itemize everything so that he doesn't feel the undue stress and the burden of making sure he's taking care of the family I mean not that he can't because he's always done that but if I decide like I said if I want to not work there's that opportunity there and we have talked about it we've discussed it we've outlined it we've done everything so we make those decisions together and there may be opportunities where you think okay you know what we're just not really jiving we're not really clicking like we used to so there might be an opportunity for therapy for coaching mm -hmm. there might be an opportunity where it's like you know what snicks and levy i love their podcast and i like some of the nuggets that they're offering and i really want to have that discovery call with them which you could do on our website for absolutely free for 15 minutes <laughs> um but you know go to our coaching page but mm -hmm. You might want to see a therapist. You might think you need to go see someone, you know, that's in your medical network, you know, whatever that opportunity may be that you both agree upon, then you pursue it. You write that down and you think, okay, this is an opportunity for us to actually pursue in 2021. Yeah. To opportunity to be better, to become better partners, maybe better communicators, better friends, uh, just be better together and an opportunity to grow your relationship as opposed to, it being torn down or whatever, you know, people are still st really stressed out and it feels like stress levels are going back up as we're dealing with the whole COVID rise. And, you know, some States are being shut down and you're talking about finances that are affected businesses that are closing. People may be laid off and, you know, or that whole work at home again thing where some folks did not get along and they weren't able to do that that well, you know? So, yeah. So that brings us to threat. <laughs> That's a threat. <laughs> yeah, the threat might be okay. Here we go. We're, we're, we're quarantined again and we're back at home. We got mm -hmm. the stay at home orders. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't quite master the operating under the same roof for as many hours as we did. And so here we go. It, it's like the sequel to the horror story that, that was the, the yeah. first one. Or, you know, the threat of losing some income. You know, how are we going to maintain and, you know, financial instability because everything fluctuates. We were in Vegas. What was it? End of October. Mm -hmm. And we went to the, a restaurant. It, we actually went to a couple of restaurants and two of the um, at two different restaurants, both of our servers told us that that was their first like week or a couple of days um, back at work where they were able to come back to work because um, people were able to go in and, and eat. And so they, they had a job where they can, they can service people. You right. Know? And, and think about childcare. Mm -hmm. You know, our daughter's going into childcare and uh, in January, but it's one of those things where you have so many people and I have so many colleagues that are just struggling because their kids are still doing, you know, um, distance learning. You have to work, you have to go to work. And some, some jobs are now deeming their employees essential, whereas they were, they might not have been that first go round but they have to go to work and yet their kids are going to be at home and they're trying to figure that out. So there's a variety of different threats that could be uh, approaching. And it's by taking the time to figure out your threat, it will help you really come up with solutions down the road, mm -hmm. really taking the time to try and figure out, okay, what are going to be the threats of coming here? What can I anticipate? The challenge is, and I can't remember the name of the study. There was a study done a number of years ago and I, I have it actually on my voicemail and I, I told myself it and I never wrote it down. It's, it's on my phone still. <laughs> But there was a study that was done um, regarding businesses that there were businesses that identified there were, it was in the Fortune 500, but there were businesses that clearly identified where the threats to their business model were going to come from. 
in the next five to 10 years. And okay. even though they identified those threats, more than half of them failed to create a policy, a plan, or some form of action to, to really stonewall or, or make sure that that threat didn't affect them. Some of the businesses that were on that list were companies like Blockbuster. Mm. They saw the threats. They knew what was coming, but they didn't think it, yeah, you know, we'll worry about it when it we're actually big. gets yeah. here. Mm -hmm. We're not going to hit it off at the pass. And as we all know, there's a lot of businesses that were the, the main things that are no longer around. Yeah, there were staples that, you know, for a while. Absolutely. And same thing happens in our relationships where you can identify threats like, okay, you know what? We married. I don't got to worry about cooking. I don't got to worry about looking nice. I don't got to worry about, you know, caring about them. I can say what I want to say. I can do what I want to do. Um, I'm just, I'm, those are extremes, but there's a variety of things that can end up being a threat that we don't take serious. And then when all of a sudden there, there's trouble in paradise, you wonder what happened? Mm -hmm. I knew this was going to happen. Why didn't I prepare or what have you? And so we're saying, identify those threats and then create a plan to and do it together. Think about what could threaten our relationship. What are the things that, as as far fetched and as wild as they may seem, what are the things that would you know create some challenges within our relationship? Yeah, and you know, let's just be honest. It's not always infidelity. You right. know, a lot of people think that oh, it's this person cheated or what have you. It's, that's not always the case, and we have to take this. These are very different times, and you know, take these things very seriously, you start seeing things, patterns that are created and you're arguing about whatever it is that you may be arguing about that things that didn't bother you before now, they're bothering you constantly, constantly, constantly. All right, time to take stock. We need to stop right now. Let's create an action plan so that we could get this thing back on the road the right way. You know, we got to make some U-turns or do some different things. So... Yep, absolutely. So that's what that's what a SWOT analysis is. And if you do this together, it can make a huge difference for your relationship and make a huge difference for 2021. Mm -hmm. You deserve to have an amazing, amazing year after this crazy year that we just had. Now, I'll be honest with you, 2020 to me was absolutely amazing for our family. There were a variety of things that transpired in 2020 that um, I am super thankful for, super grateful for. That I believe, and that, that'll be another podcast where we'll talk about the things reflecting upon this past year and, you know, what we're thankful for. That might be the last podcast of the year where we go over that. So I'll save that for then. But 2021 deserves to have your absolute best. But you know what? It doesn't happen without planning. And I think that by utilizing that free tool that we offer on our website, you sitting down, figuring out your values, and then using the SWOT analysis as an overlay as a couple. It's going to give you a solid foundation, a great roadmap, if you will, to what can be accomplished in this upcoming year. I agree with that. So with that said, you have anything else? Um, no, I think we did pretty well. Okay. Well, in that case, what I want to do is make sure that we uh, continue our tradition of using the I can can for couples. And that's focusing on the affirmations that are available to you. There's 40 different affirmations in every one of these cans. It's a fun little tool where you can just pick a little something to focus on for the week and or this, the day or what have you. And this can be um, one of the action plans too. If you find yourself having, I don't know how to say this, if you find yourself with having a lack of something nice to say or do for your spouse, get an I can can because this, the affirmations, they're action oriented and it also will give you some ideas. Right. It's, you know, it's under $10. This thing is very well constructed. Um, it, we used to have this in an old company that I used to uh, to be the CEO of. And it was built around affirmations for children as well as couples. And we had one that was for devotionals. Um, just really nice. But these are the ones that we held on to once we actually dissolved the company. Um, and I, it's a nice little tool that can really help with relationships. And it's the little things that add up. Mm -hmm. So. You pick these little affirmations. There's 40 of them, like we said. Mine says, I can send flowers just because. Oh, send me some flowers. I will, with my name on them. <laughs> <laughs> Mine says, I can love my partner unconditionally. So you're thinking, they always say these. They repeat. Well, yeah, because we're past 40 days. <laughs> 
So you do these, you can do they're, it for They're good enough to where you can do it over and over again. They Absolutely. never get old. <laughs> these are the little things that you want to do repetitively. Look, people think that success are these big, grandiose gestures, these major steps that you take, but they're not. Success is nothing. And I'm talking about success in business, success in love, success in marriage, success in fitness. It's not these huge, grand steps that you take. They're little itty bitty steps that you take consistently over and over and over again. A, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, but guess what? <laughs> you got to take another step and another step. And as small as those steps are, it's the repetition. It's the consistency of those steps that gets you to the destination. Same thing with the I can can go to the website. There's two stores on our website, married You're going to find one that says shop. The shop is just some uh, podcast t-shirts as well as the I can can. And then you have our premium store. And it says premium store, I believe. And on that premium store is where we have the full line of the Married into Crazy gear that you can get and share with each other. So like we do every single podcast, and until further notice, we're going to continue this. We're going to spend the last eight minutes and 46 seconds in silence. And it's for social justice. You know, a lot of people, we haven't said his name very often. And the reason why we haven't said George Floyd's name, it's not because of the controversy. It's just that his isn't the only name. Mm -hmm. There's so many names that should be spoken mm -hmm. as examples of the need for social justice in, in our country, and truly across the world, mm -hmm. but we're focused on the United States. And it was eight minutes and 46 seconds that George Floyd um, was denied the opportunity, denied his freedom to the point where he was choked out. Now, this isn't an argument about his... Um, him being a Boy Scout or an argument about him um, not being des deservedly being taken into custody for what he was doing. It's about being summarily executed in the streets without due process, which is granted to each and every citizen of the United States, according to our constitution. So we recognize eight minutes and 46 seconds of silence for us to reflect on how we can be better citizens. Mm -hmm how we can actually think about how can, what can we do in our community to make it better? So that way everyone is afforded the rights and the guarantees under our constitution and just sharing love. You know, Christ gave us the ultimate order and that was to love thy neighbor and take eight minutes and 46 seconds to think about how can I be a better neighbor, a brother, a better sister, a better spouse, a better child, a better citizen. So with that said, until the next time, be blessed. Bye-bye.